25 gas-powered boats to push the island back into place. And the, the picture I saw, it looks like the island was floating toward this like bridge. So the people of Chippewa, you know, are saving their bridge, but they're they're replacing this island that like floats out of place. Which isn't that what happened with Pangea? Like when we all fell apart, could we put it back into place? Could we? Could we? If we had enough get uh, enough big boats to do it, could we? Could we push them all back? Hello, all you oddballs. What it do? I'm your host, Mike T -t 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 Tony Heath, and we are back. We are back in the lab. We're flying solo today. Man, I've had a good week. I got a dog. Me and my wife, Megan, we got a dog. He is a beautiful Australian Shepherd Bernese Mountain Doodle. An Aussie Mountain Doodle, or as some people call a Swiss Doodle, which makes absolutely no sense to me. I don't know. I mean, I know like Swiss hot chocolate, Swiss army knives, Swiss doodles. What does that have to do with Bernese? I don't know where Bern, Berna is. Yo, Frankie, look that up. Bernese. Where is it? Oh, the Bernese Alps, which is in Switzerland. Oh, actually makes a ton of sense. All right. Well, thank you, Frankie, uh, for clearing that up for me. I really appreciate that. Man, I don't know how the sound. I got a new audio processor. I'm not sure what I think about it. I'm not sure if I'm about it quite yet. No, nah, it's been a good week. Yeah, we got a dog. Uh, Dusty Slay came into town. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, Dusty Slay was here. And uh, there's a lot going on in the world. There's some weird world activity. Let's get into it. Did you know that scientists have discovered a rare planet named 201-733B? That is twice the size of Earth, not once, but twice, and it's covered by oceans. It's covered by oceans. Now get this, 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 uh, this planet, dude, is uh, 245 light years away, orbiting a star. You all remember that uh, that old film Waterworld? I think that was about an apocalyptic Earth. Hold on, I got to take a drink of this chocolate milk. Chocolate milk with ice. What up, Nate Bargazzi? That was my alarm to remind me to do a bait Nate Bargazzi reference. Now, I'm feeling weird, though. I just like, feel like my brain is... Y'all ever just feel like your brain is just just kind of like slow? I just feel kind of slow today. I got, I got slow, slow, brain, slow brain today. I could just... Ugh, I just feel all locked up. I'm like a I'm like a gear that just stuck. I can't get undone. No, but I was just thinking about this this water world. Dude, so like if these aliens that are here, maybe they came from planet 201-733B. Like it would only make sense because like water is life, you know? Water is life. Jesus is the living water. Uh, gives us life. You know, if you believe in him, you will become a wellspring of eternal life. This like water is life. So if this massive planet is just covered with water and there are other beings out there. Dude, I've been on this alien thing for too long, but I, yeah, that's just happening, dude. According to what I saw on Instagram. <laughs> so I believe it all. Dude, speaking of water and uh, creatures in the water, dude, there was this guy that built a homemade hamster wheel trying to go across the ocean. He, it was, uh, guess where he was from? Guess where the, guess where the guy who built the homemade 
hamster wheel. <laughs> he was from Florida, dude. Of course he's from Florida. Give it up for Florida, everybody. Nah, this guy, he got busted um, trying to literally run like a hamster across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, I cannot, uh, I can't pronounce this guy's name. Reza, Reza, Bellucci. The, oh, he's from the Bellucci family. Uh, he was about 70 miles off the coast of Georgia. And uh, <laughs> there was a hurricane, there was a hurricane Franklin uh, was causing life threatening surf. And they found this guy on the ocean in this hamster wheel, dude. Uh, now, nah, like, can you, can you imagine if he did it? That would be incredible. Like, I, you know, obviously it wasn't very safe for this guy. Uh, can you, can you imagine yourself just being a hamster going across the ocean, dude? I mean, it's pretty big. Uh, if, if you are watching the video, here it is. If not, check the show notes. I got a, a link to where I found uh, this this story. But uh, Florida, Floridians, Florid, Floridians, Floridians, Floridians are crazy, dude. You, you're built different down there. Flo Rida. Kudos to him. You know, he didn't do it. He didn't accomplish his goal, but he tried. He was just trying to to hamster wheel across the ocean. And that's got to count for something, dude. Just trying to hamster wheel to the motherland, to Great Britain. Dude, th there was, uh, speaking of the ocean, there was this scientist that found these space balls. He found these space balls down into, in the, in the water. Uh, it was this Harvard physicist. Uh, there was these, metallic spheres so a space ball that it and he, he it was confirmed that it was found or the the source of it was outside of our solar system here's what i don't understand about science dude how do you find these and say they're not from here like that's just what i don't get like how do you know it's from outside our solar system like if it's just not material we've discovered before couldn't we say this is the first we've discovered a new metal like we got that new metal You've heard of death metal, but we got that, we got that space metal, but it's not really space metal. It's just earth metal that we never had before. But I, I will say I'm back on this dude. What if those space balls came from water world planet two zero one dash seven three three B I'm now putting together. Isn't that funny? The same. Okay. Oh, I'm not, you know, I'm putting my tin foil on right now. Isn't it funny? The day or the, not the day. It was, this isn't the same day. The, the time period that we discover water world, we also find these metallic space balls in the ocean. I don't know. Is it connected or not? Now, have you ever thought that you don't have enough thumbs? A 3D printed thumb. And I saw this video of, of them operating the 3D printed thumb. So it's like you put it right here on your, like the, the bottom. Okay. So you got that space beneath your pinky. You just put another thumb there. So you are your ability. You can, you know, unpeel a banana one handed. You could pick up seven oranges one handed. You can unscrew a bottle one handed. Cause you're both of your thumbs or like one thumb is holding on to it in your palm and the top, your, your index finger and your, your OG thumb, they're screwing the top off. What I'm, what I'm curious about, what I want to know from you guys is if you could have a 3D, th if you could have one of these thumbs and you could rock it, would you rest in peace to the Netflix DVD game? Y'all remember the joy of going onto the internet and looking up the new film coming out? You plugged it in, and then uh, Netflix was going to ship you the DVD, and you you were in the queue for the new Transformers film. Shout out to Shia. It popped into the mailbox, and you it was a Friday night. You guys got some popcorn. The family was just kicking up, and it was this whole event, you know? And then you, you shipped it back so you could get... So you could get the, the next film. You could get uh, Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious was going to come in the mail. 
and you were just there was just so much anticipation and joy like that that delayed satisfaction i just miss it and it's probably not a shocker I, honestly i was probably more shocked that netflix was still sending out dvds than i am that they're discontinuing that service that's what's more surprising to me is that they were they were still doing it but it is sad to know that it's not happening anymore let me ask you this okay so here's something i was thinking about recently is uh pangea which is okay to be honest i don't really know too much about what that means but my let's just say how i understand pangea is that back in the day there was one world well like we were still on the world but it was like one land like we were like one big land mass is that right or like two like we were just bigger ones i think it was just one like we call that pangea back in the day there was just one land and then through science history the earth getting older we split up which is sad what i'm curious is could we find all the pieces like a puzzle and put it all back together? Now, what got me thinking about this is I saw this video of this, this island. To be honest, I don't know where this island... Okay, this island is in... Hey, Frankie, look up where Chippewa is. Oh, it's Wisconsin. In Chippewa, Wisconsin. Every year in Chippewa, Wisconsin. Shout out if you're living in Chippewa, dude, and you're the one of the boaters that... What they would do is they would have 25 gas-powered boats to push the island back into place. And the, the picture I saw, it looks like the island was floating toward this like bridge. So the people of Chippewa, you know, are saving their bridge, but they're they're replacing this island that like floats out of place. Which isn't that what happened with Pangea, like when we all fell apart. So what I'm wondering is, can we? I don't know, like. Could we put it back into place? Could we, could we, if we had enough, uh, enough big boats to do it, could we, could we push them all back? Now I, I posted on this and I asked, and, and here's, here's some of the feedback I got. C Warren three, 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 six says it would take eight, 836,412. To be honest, doesn't seem like a lot. Like if we just lined up boats, let's say on the western coast of America up to Canada and to Mexico, we just did. I wish there was a way to, if we could just like kind of break, I think it would be too much to push. Yeah, I think we got to go over to Africa and Europe. So we're going to push North America. And maybe if we could, if we had enough boats on North America, maybe it would like break off. So then we didn't have to push north and south together. So then we could come over. So we get enough boats. It's got to be more than 836,412 boats. Oh, steel artist, uh, steel underscore artist underscore 69 must have been born in 69. says uh, 836,412, uh, but only aircraft carriers, which are pretty big boats. And then... Uh, Yagi Shri underscore Sisodia said, you all, uh, you need all Tiansheng weapons to, what's, hey Frankie, what is Tiangshe? Oh, these are like magical. We need magic. Well, I'm not sure if we need magic because these people in Chippewa, Wisconsin have figured out how to, just push that back with enough boats. So I don't know. I'm just thinking about this. Well, would we even want to be all back together? Like if we could reassemble Pangea, the question is not maybe if we could, or if we can answer that, if we could, if we got enough airship carriers, maybe we did find it. Like maybe we could just use some of these, that new metal, those uh, space balls. Maybe that's like the kind of metal we need to like generate maybe like new sources of power or like stronger ships to like, hold the load like maybe those space balls um, from water world could help us but like if we were able to reassemble pangea with some boats would we want like maybe that's the thing that actually can help can help us like we man like maybe if we were just able to 
be closer to one another. Maybe we'd be more compassionate towards toward each other. And it's a weird world that we're living in, man. Um, and I just think like, don't get discouraged, you know, like golly, like I, I even just want to like, I mean, those are like, that's weird, but it's also cool. Like the people of Chippewa, Wisconsin are pushing an Island to get like, that is, that's the, okay. Whether or not you're with me or not on Pangea, that's pretty cool to think about like what we're able to do together that we are better together we're stronger together and that's something now i did have a great week uh so last week uh dusty slay was here in tacoma washington t town tech tech a town tacoma washington and uh man he's coming to spokane this next weekend so if hey if you're one of my friends or enemies in Spokane, and you're going to be around or cancel your plans, go see him at Spokane Comedy Club. In uh, I think he's there Thursday to Saturday uh, this week, uh, which is, what are the dates on that, Frankie? It's the 21st through the 20th, or the 14th through the 16th. Golly, 14th through the 16th, Dusty will be in Spokane. Just trying to push his shows, you know, I guess. I got to see the the feature act Georgia Comstock, who is a a Denver comedian. Look her up on Instagram, Georgia's Wild. She's very funny. Uh, I had never met her or heard of her before or heard any of her comedy, but she was she is very funny. I think. Hey, if you're in Denver, I'm pretty sure she is. Maybe on the 14th, she's having her headlining de- debut in downtown uh, Denver at Comedy Works. I believe is the club there. Uh, go check her out. Uh, she's very funny, and and Dusty killed it. There was uh, it was crazy. Like in the in the middle of his show, uh, you just hear you hear yeah. Like so, I was I don't know if you guys have ever been to Tacoma Comedy Club, but there's kind of like this balcony where you can't really see the back of the room, but you can see the stage. Great, but you can't see the back of the room, and you hear from the back of the room shouting, and that's something that typically doesn't happen. Like people like shout out to the comedian, but like this is like angry shouting happening from the back of the comedy club. And it's, you know, it kind of goes on for like 10 seconds. And you're like, well, that was weird. Like what's happening? Like somebody opened the door outside and you kind of heard, but then it just keeps going, dude. Didn't you hear gra- glass shatter? And at this point, like Dusty's like, what's going on back there? Cause you know, it's like so dark. He, he can't see what's going on. And it was crazy. Like, I guess what had happened, I talked to the security guard afterwards, it was this guy that was just faded and uh, wouldn't stop talking. But uh, it was crazy, like, because you could hear all of this, like, very, ang- like, it was muffled, though, so you couldn't exactly hear what they were saying, but you could hear the anger in their voice, their frustration, their, golly, they were just all worked up. But it was awesome. Like, not that, uh, <laughs> but, like, Dusty just kind of rolled with it. It was a hot show. Um, Dusty is so funny, so funny. And he's a great guy. Like, um, I feel very thankful. Um, we got to just hang out a little bit after the show. He is a great, uh, he just kind of, he kind of just shared golly, just a little bit about what's going on in and comedy for him, let me, you know, he kind of spoke into, I had some questions for him and, uh, it was kind of a bummer. Like there was this guy that was just sitting, well, we were hanging out outside his hotel. Uh, and there was this random guy just kind of standing near this kind of like outdoor furniture area that we were all hanging out in. And, uh, Dusty was great. You know, he, he's like, Hey, you want to take a seat? You know, um, but it was like we it was like four comedians and then just this random guy, you know, having a, we were talking comedy like that's kind of what we were trying to do. We we're trying to stand up and how do you grow and and just picking their brains. You know, I, I got to, you know, I think the, the collect there was probably like, oh, golly, dude, uh, like 25 years at least of like comedy experience in the circle, like minus me. So I was just, you know, asking a bunch of questions, trying to learn. Like it was like a great moment. Like I was so, uh, so blown away. 
um, that Dusty would take the time to do that for like a younger comic like myself. And it was, I had a ton of fun. Like it was just, it was Georgia and Matthew Torkelson. Um, Golly, I hope I have his name right. But it was weird because then this, this other guy and like, I don't know, there's, there's like, you know, in any industry or kind of hobby, like there's insider language. Like, have you ever talked to someone who played D and D or plays D and D whenever my friends who play D and D, I start talking about it. I just, I glaze over. I'm like, what words are these? Like I never heard these words before. Like they're making up a new language. So we're, we're talking about comedy and, you know, it's just hard to maintain a conversation, you know, when somebody's kind of like popping in and out and, but he was, he was a sweet guy. Uh, but I, I'll be honest, I was a little disappointed. I guess is what I'm trying to say, but it was crazy. Like, so we were hanging out and, um, yeah, just getting to get feedback or just kind of like, you know, the input, you know, of of, you know, a national headliner, Dusty Slay, who's, you know, he's got a special coming out, so be looking out for that. It's going to be hilarious. I So I've seen Dusty, like, that's crazy. I've seen him, like, three times over the last calendar year, like, do, like, an hour. And then, I, well, well, he invited Megan and I back, uh, or he invited, yeah, like, come back, you know, on Friday or Saturday. I'll get you in. So we went back in on, on Saturday um, got some comedian, uh, some comedian comped tickets, which is great. You know, if you're a comedian, it's an awesome opportunity to be able to go. You know, I did buy a ticket for Thursday. <laughs> I didn't yeah, support my guy Dusty, but uh, you know, when I came back and and watched the Saturday show with Megan, he was doing like there was, I don't know, like fifteen to twenty minutes that he didn't do on. Friday. And then I saw him in Portland back in what was that was March. And I feel like there was probably like 30, 35 minutes that was totally different. Uh, we didn't get to talk a lot about like what, what was on his special, but I'm really stoked to see it, you know, like to see what, what jokes I've heard and maybe jokes I haven't even heard. Like that guy, he's got a catalog, you know, and it's, uh, he, his, I really relate to him. I think once, um, I mean, one, he, he believes in God, like he, he follows God with his life. That's what he seeks to do. So, you know, I think that is like a natural, like I'm going to relate to him, you know, I think like having like a higher purpose and then just even being funny, you know, or like some sort of career accomplishment, I can really relate to him in that. And I, I think I respect him, like his, his work ethic from what I see from afar, you know, and, and I've heard about his story, just working hard at something, um, yeah, but also like just seeking the Lord uh in in comedy. Kind of it, comedy can feel so dark and jaded against religion and uh especially Christianity and but all types of religion, you know, just even faith. Uh it it it, it can it can feel like you go to an open mic, you know, there's gonna be at least one or two comics that are kind of sharing about maybe like their their negative perception of Christianity or maybe even their hurt, which is fine, you know, like uh, make your problems into, you know, turn your pu problems into punchlines, you know, like that's, uh, that's comedy, baby. But like to hear, you know, someone who is, is really, you know, seeking to be devout in their faith and, and following Jesus, uh, but also is like a national headlining comedian who like, isn't a Christian comic. Like that guy's not like Dusty's just doing comedy clubs. Like, and he's, and I, I love that. Like, that's kind of what, that's kind of the route I, I'm not saying I want to be a national or I'm going to be a national headliner, but just like, so like, uh, what I'm trying to say is like a dusty is a, he's not a Christian comedian, but he's a comedian who is a Christian. And that's what I seek to do as well is that I, uh, I, that's kind of the lane that I want to be in and, and what I enjoy, uh, to do. So I just really appreciate his his input. I look up to him a lot. He is hilarious. And if you haven't heard of Dusty and you're listening to this, like just pause this and go uh, look up his album on uh, Spotify or go to he's got a 30 minutes on the Netflix stand ups. Whenever you're listening, it's depending on when you listen to this and his special may be coming out. You know, uh, we're not sure what 
what streaming platform, but you just Google Dusty Slay, go, go Dusty Slay, Dusty Slay on the Googs, and you'll find him, man. All right, this is a, this has been a weird podcast. I don't even know how I feel. It felt weird, but thank you for listening, and uh, I hope to get some more uh, guests on. Got some guests lining up. Uh, but I wanted to hop on here and and just kind of share about, like all the weird things that are going on. Share about getting to hang out with Dusty and talk comedy with him. You know, one of my like, it's kind of like a what do you even call you know someone who you don't know, like a mentor. But you know, like we've only had a conversation once in person. <laughs> you know, like I've you know Dusty slays ten episodes, uh, ten plus episodes on how to become a comic really influenced me. Uh, to pursue stand-up comedy, and that kind of gave me like a framework to process the journey. I also just really enjoy his comedy. You know, like even I feel like if I wasn't even trying to do, if I quit doing comedy, I would still listen to Dusty because I think he's very funny. And uh, so getting to hang out with somebody who like you, you respect like their work ethic, like how they have advanced in their development, in their trade, and their artistry in and of itself and um like their faith and then get to like just talk to that person you know that's that was super cool and just so thankful uh for that opportunity and to get that insight like that's that's like it's a really hard thing to do you know in kind of like a like a small group kind of setting you know outside of just like a, a broadcast like podcast or some video on youtube or whatever but like to be in a dialogue about it is is pretty unique and i'm super thankful for that yeah, I'll be honest. I don't know how funny this uh, this podcast has been, but we're out here. We're doing it. We're just trying to uh, stay funny and stay weird, bro. You know, we're average oddcasts. We're trying to figure it out. You know, this isn't just some average podcast. It's the average oddcast. Uh, comedy update for me. Been doing it. You know, October 18th. We are seven days away from a month away of my anniversary in comedy. We're lining up a one year kind of celebration also for my 30th birthday, which is in uh, the middle of October. We're going to do this big show here in Seattle. Be looking out for that. That's going to be on October 21st. That's a Saturday. I I believe we're, the show's probably going to start at like a seven. We have a couple of venues that we're uh, working through, so nothing is set in stone quite yet, but it will hap- It will be happening in Seattle at 7 p.m. We're not sure where exactly, just quite yet in Seattle, uh, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be a fun time. You're invited to my 30th birthday, my one year in comedy celebration. Um, this this Thursday, I'm going to Pasco, Washington on uh to headline at grizzly bar so if you are one of my friends in the tri-cities or you're listening to this or you know somebody in the tri-cities hit them up come out support uh it's going to be my first time headlining a i would say that's that's a headlining a show headlining a comedy show i've never done that before i've you know been like the feature at an open mic or even done, I've done like a longer set at an open mic, but this is like the first time it's like, this is a comedy show that I'm headlining. This is a, I'm very thankful for this opportunity. I'm looking forward to it a ton. It's going to be a long day. I'm going to drive there and then drive back in the night. That's the grind, baby. Uh, but I'm so thankful. And thank you so much for listening uh, to this week's uh, podcast. Yeah, I think average oddcast, you know, people have asked like, you know, so you've changed the name, like, is it changing in in its essence? And I would say, like, not really, uh, because like if you were with, if you've been if you've been with us from the beginning or you go back and listen, like I was just trying to podcast, like that's that's what we called it. That's what we we're just trying to do, you know. I, and I started around the same time I was starting to do comedy. You know, like last November, I think Thanksgiving week was like the first episode. So I'd been doing comedy for like a month at that point. What I'm still trying to do is is just really chronicle my journey in comedy. So this is kind of like a video. Oh, oh golly, like a video diary. Sounds like a weird thing to uh, compare it to. 
Uh, Cause it's much more than that. Like I'm also just, you know, having conversations with like, it was great to have Joey Mejia on last week. You know, we're talking about what's weird in the world. I think that's just what I enjoy thinking and talking about. It's like, what's weird, you know, like, yeah, things are so, things are so heavy. You know, I don't want to focus on what's heavy, but I think it's funny to think about, okay, just even go back to Chippewa, Wisconsin, dude, you're in Chippewa, Wisconsin. And you are one of 25 gas powered boats pushing an island back into place, dude. That is so weird. Or think about those space balls that we found at the bottom of the ocean or that Floridian out being a hamster wheel trying to go back to the motherland or thinking about the aliens on freaking water world or Netflix no longer doing DVDs. Like that's the death of like a whole like a whole just golly, like a time period of media and entertainment, like another kind of like, you know, blockbusters done. Um, and now Netflix is no longer doing DVDs. Like, that's just great. Like, that's so weird. Like to think about, man, that like kids born over the last couple of years, like good chance that they have like, will never watch like a DVD. You know, I think I was watching VHS tapes, but VHS, VHS tapes, but I was on the, the back end of that, you know, so I almost missed that. Now I grew up in the era of DVDs, you know, these kids today, they're growing up in the era of streaming, like what's next. We're going to have the VR goggles, you know what I'm saying? So I just, it's just weird, you know, like, man, let's, let's get Pangea back together. <laughs> do have a big old movie watch party. Now football's back and that's dope. Uh, Mizzou won M I Z Z O U. I'm I'm loving comedy. I love all of the weird people I get to meet, the normal people I get to meet, all the oddballs out there. Thank you for listening, man. If you haven't subscribed or or liked or followed, you know whether on Spotify or YouTube or wherever you're getting this, leave us a review, hit the like, subscribe on the tube. Uh, we appreciate it. Even if you listen to this podcast on Spotify or, you know, Apple or wherever you get it, man, go on to the YouTubes. Look me up at Mike, Tony Heath. Uh, we got comedy on there. Uh, we did, I had a guy at a, at a bar once say, dude, you should have a Patreon. And I looked into it. It's very easy to set up. So I set it up for that guy. But if you also want to be a part of it, You can join the Patreon for $7.77 every month to get exclusive content. So I'm building it out currently. But right now, you can go on there and you can watch a a somewhat cringy, somewhat funny uh, set I did in Gig Harbor, Washington back in July for like five people. Like that is exclusive content. You can get that nowhere else up my Patreon, which is linked in the bio. So you could, you could find that there and I'll have like, I'm going to drop like a video from that. Didn't make it onto last week's episodes. So you get exclusive content there. I'm also going to be uploading. Um, I'm going to be uploading the video from Pasco from this Thursday. I will upload that probably by like the end of the weekend. Uh, so again, we're putting exclusive content on there on the Patreon. You could join for $7 and 77 cents. Um, and you could join for a month. You could stay on to follow the journey. Uh, we're going to do some, some stuff there. If you're a comedian or you just like comedy, you know, I'd love to support and join in there. Uh, but I'll, I'll wrap up with this. This has been great. All right. So dude, uh, September 22nd. No. Yeah. September 22nd. A local comedian, Taylor Clark, is taping a comedy special in Everett, Washington. I personally, I don't think I'll be able to make it. It's still TBD with some like work stuff I got going on. If not, I will be there. But you should go. It's only $20. Dude, and, and, and Taylor has even said, if you can't afford $20, he will, he'll get you in, you know? So DM me, hit me up. If you want to go watch some comedy, um, 20 bucks. If you can't do the 20 bucks, go support this guy, a hilarious local comedian 
taping a comedy special in Everett. Shout out to you, Cho Johnston. Um, I hope uh, Philip and Katrina can go out to the show and uh, all your other friends in, in Everett. Go hit them up. Go see Taylor Clark. And uh, that's Friday the 22nd at the Everett Historic Theater. Watch them. Hey, thank you guys so much for, for listening. Uh, I appreciate you guys following along and supporting what we're doing here. And as always, my friends, stay funny and stay weird. Peace. I grew up in a place where they told you what to chase. Told you how to run the race. Every move was on the page, but I didn't like their way. Had to fight and misbehave. Had to find a way to change. Had to leave to find my way. Caught up in a daydream. I be in my mind up there almost daily. It's how I pass time, no opinions safely. It's how I understand what I want in this place. See, cause everybody wanna tell you bad things. What could go wrong? What fame brings, but success is a finicky thing. And if you ain't sure, no, it'll never be. I don't wanna let myself down, myself down. Great shot.